Welcome back to Earth Sky. I'm Deborah Bird speaking with you live on September 10th about the continuing saga of Arendelle, a name that stirred up the astronomy world back in 2022. But before we get to that, I've got some news. NASA held a press conference earlier today to discuss a rock sample from Mars called Sapphire Canyon. This rover, the Perseverance rover on Mars, drilled this rock sample from an area on Mars thought to be an ancient river delta. And here's the rock. It's peppered with black spots, which scientists call poppy seeds, and lighter spots with dark rims that they call leopard spots. And NASA said this morning that so far they have no other good explanation for what created these spots except for biological processes. So they were very cagey in not confirming that it's a sign of life on Mars, but uh, they said signs do point to ancient life. We have an article by Earth Sky's Kelly Kaiser Witt up at our website. The link is below and in the post description. And now let's head much, much farther away from Earth and much, much, much farther back in time to the earliest days of our universe and back to Arendelle. The Hubble Space Telescope first spotted it in 2022 and at that time, this object set the record for being the most distant star ever seen. But here's the twist. New research is suggesting that Arendelle might not be a single star at all. It might be a star cluster. So we are just looking so, so, so far away here. And let's rewind a little bit. Astronomers first saw Arendelle thanks to a trick of nature called gravitational lensing. I'm gonna play you a one minute video from astronomer Brian Welsh at the University of Maryland and NASA Goddard Space Flight Center. This video is from 2022. And Brian led the study during which Arendelle was found. He's going to tell you how they spotted it and notice he's calling it the most distant star known. What we're looking at here is an image from the Hubble Space Telescope of the Sunrise Arc, which is this long red banana that you can see on the, the screen right there. And then what's highlighted by that white arrow is the lens star Arendelle, which is the most distant star that's been observed so far. So we're seeing this entire galaxy as it was uh, about 13 billion years ago. This particular discovery was thanks to gravitational lensing. So what you can kind of see in the background here with all these sort of yellowish galaxies, those are all galaxies that are part of a galaxy cluster. And this galaxy cluster is a very massive object that actually bends the, the space-time around it. And as the light from this distant galaxy passes through that distorted space-time, it gets magnified and uh, stretched out into this long arc that we see. Because of exactly where all these galaxies are, there is a peak right here, right on this point, where the magnification starts to, to skyrocket. So it starts to become a, an incredibly high magnification just right in that spot, and that's how we're able to, to see this one star. So that was astronomer Brian Welsh. And Brian called this object Irendel, and I'm calling it Irendel. We're just so happy to have a name. <laughs> uh, like virtually all objects in astronomy that have names instead of numbers, this one gets pronounced in a lot of different ways. And they're all OK. So here's what we know so far. According to astronomers' calculations, the galaxy containing Irendel, which is smeared out as a red arc, on this image existed just 900 million years after the Big Bang. That's not quite a billion years after the start of our 13 billion year old universe. So this object is far away and we're seeing it as it was long ago in the very young universe in the era that our earthly astronomers call the cosmic dawn. And that's how Arendelle's galaxy got its name because of its shape. And again, the galaxy is the red streak that you see in this image. 
it stretched into a, this arc shape by the warping of space time around a massive galaxy cluster between us and this very, very distant galaxy. This galaxy exists in the era of the cosmic dawn, and that's why astronomers named it the Sunrise Arc Galaxy. And Arendelle itself, I love the name Arendelle, and it's so exciting to have a name to talk about instead of just a number. Arendelle comes from an old English word that means morning star or rising light. And it appears in some early medieval poems like Beowulf and a famous old English hymn where it refers to a radiant star heralding the dawn. Sort of like the planet Venus does right now, which you can see for yourself if you look east on these September 2025 mornings before dawn breaks. And the author J.R.R. Tolkien, who studied Old English, was also inspired by the name Arendelle. He used it in some of his early myth making, shaping the name into a half elf, half human character. Uh, and that character was named Irin Dill. That's Dill, not Dell. He was a mariner who sailed the heavens bearing the morning star. But okay, I'll stop. <laughs> I told you, I love this stuff. Anyway, Irindel is an old name that created a new sensation when astronomers used it for the most distant star. But is it the most distant star? Or is it a star cluster? Here's the debate. In 2022, astronomers published this paper uh, based on data from the Hubble Space Telescope. Uh, in it, they said that Arendelle was a single star, the most distant single star known. But now, in 2025, a new study has appeared by Massimo Pascali at the University of California, Berkeley. It uses data from the James Webb Telescope. Pascali and his colleagues say Arendelle looks like a star cluster, a tight family of stars bound together. And here is astronomer Massimo Pascali at the University of California, Berkeley. Uh, and here's how they came to the idea that Arendelle is a star cluster. Uh, this astronomer and his colleagues compared Arendelle's light with that of another object in the very distant and highly magnified Sunrise Arc galaxy. They said the second object, uh, which they labeled 1b, uh, was a star cluster. And it turned out that the light from Arendelle looked the same as the light from 1b. So both of those objects, uh, both of those sources of light fit beautifully with astronomers' computer models of star clusters. And now here's why this matters. If Arendelle really is a star, it's one of the first stars known. And if it's a star cluster, it might be a precursor to globular clusters, which are big, ancient, spherical swarms of stars, uh, which we see today orbiting galaxies like our own Milky Way. So if Arendelle is a star cluster, we might be witnessing how one of the earliest globular star clusters came to be. So is that what Arendelle is? The jury is still out. Identifying something this far away is hard because in astronomy, all we have is light and the light from Arendelle has traveled for billions of years. It's been warped and magnified on its way to us. And at the end of the day, we just don't know what it is yet. So Pascali and his colleagues said there might be a smoking gun, and that would be if Arendelle is giving off stellar winds. Uh, those are like the solar wind from our sun. And they said they might be able to detect these winds. And if they do, it would clinch the case for Arendelle being a single star. But I don't really get that because wouldn't the stars in a star cluster be blowing off stellar winds too? So always more questions, but here's where we stand on September 10th, 2025. Um, Arendelle is either the most distant star ever seen or it's a group 
of the most distant stars ever seen. So what do you think? Do you think Arendelle is one star or a star cluster? Drop your thoughts into the chat. And you know, either way, Arendelle is an amazing window into our universe's earliest days. One Earth, one sky, Earth sky.